Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new video on the channel. Inside of today's video, we're taking a look at over 30 balance changes coming with a brand new update. Six brand new hype charges. We're going to be ranking them from worst to best. We're going to be taking a look at a bunch of rank changes as well. And just giving you guys my opinions on what's going to be really strong in the new meta. So of course, make sure you subscribed if you're not already. Because during the update cycle, I'll be giving you guys the best advice on the meta and everything good with it. So without further ado, let's jump into it. So we're going to begin with the balance changes. Starting off with the buffs. And the first brawler is going to be Gus. So you'll be glad to hear that he's getting a knock back to his kit again. But it's in the form of his super this time around. So now whenever you use a super, whether it's on yourself or a teammate, it will knock back opponents. So typically I use super on myself with Gus. So if there's a Mortis, if there's a Buzz on you, you can use a super and knock them back a little bit. This is much better than the old Kooky Popper knockback in my opinion. Because now it's not like a guaranteed double hit with the knockback. And you can still defend yourself against aggro brawlers. You can also give this to your teammates. So again, if your teammate is getting ran all over by a buzz or a mortis you can throw the shield on them knock them back give them a little bit of space i really love this change and i can definitely foresee gus becoming definitely near the top of the meta again the next up we have a mr p and we've got two buffs from mr p which i'm actually a little bit scared about the first one is going to be with his spawner movement speed it's been increased from 800 to 1000 so i'm not too sure what the numbers mean but it means a 20 percent increase which you can definitely feel the difference with that means that the porters are just going to apply pressure much quicker they're going to spawn out and just fly across to the opponents much quicker and it's just going to waste a lot more opponents ammo so this is a really big change in my opinion i think it's going to be so much more annoying also so the spawner home base HP has increased from 4,400 HP to 5,000. So that means it can tank a lot. It'd be a lot harder to kill the Mr. P spawner. I think Mr. P is going to improve a lot. It's not going to make him like an S tier brawler, but it's definitely going to make him a lot more viable. The next brawler is Mortis. He's receiving two buffs as well. His basic attack damage has been increased from 1,880 damage to 2,000 damage, which is a 6% increase. And because his combo spinner gadget also just combines with his damage in total, it that's also going from 1880 damage to 2000 as well so a six percent buff there i think it's going to help him a little bit in his interactions but i still feel like mortis is too easily countered and he's still awaiting for his hypercharge next brawler that's receiving some changes is willow she's receiving two buffs and it's going to be a buff for each star power so the first one is with the obsession star power the movement speed increase is going from 25 percent to 33 percent so when you're super onto an opponent they're going to get a 33 percent increased movement speed which is actually substantial you might not feel like that's going to be a lot in terms of percentage change but it is you can feel the difference a lot you're going to be able to make a lot more plays and it, you're definitely going to feel the value of this super now and the other change is with love is blind so the reduction in reload speed affected by the brawlers is going from 25 percent to 30 percent so it's pretty hard to see the value with love is blind but i think willow's kit is pretty bit, it's been very underwhelming people don't even know what star power is better but now i feel like you can actually feel the value of both star powers the next brawler on the buff list is barley he's receiving two buffs as well the same as willow but he's getting a buff to his basic attack damage and his super damage so the basic attack damage is going from 1520 to 1600 this is a five percent buff it's not really going to do a lot to be honest the main problem with barley is that he can't really defend himself and he hasn't really he just gets outranged by other throws so i don't see this doing too much his super damage is also being increased from 1520 to 1600 so again i feel like barley probably needs some other buffs i just feel like he gets overwhelmed so easily and especially with all the hypercharges he's still not going to be any better so speaking of hypercharges rosa is getting a hypercharge charge rate buff it's going from 40 percent to 50 percent so essentially that means it's going from taking 2.5 supers to get her hypercharge to two supers so this is definitely going to be a big buff to rosa the problem with rosa is that it just took so long to get a hypercharge before you know you could cycle through so easily and just run through people so i feel like you're actually going to be able to make some plays with rosa now but i don't foresee her being the force that she used to be moving on to the final brother that's receiving that buff it is with janet her super damage is being increased from 1200 damage to 1600 so so this is a 33 percent damage buff so it doesn't really seem like a lot to some people but trust me it will be a lot if you think about it if you can connect two or three of those attacks onto an opponent 
you can nearly one shot like most of the throwers in the game which is absolutely insane again it is pretty hard against good players against good players you probably only hit one maybe two up maximum of those shots but it's really going to help with the chip damage and i think it's going to make her a little bit better so now we're going to be moving on to the nerfs and of course we're starting off with the best brawler in the game angelo his super poison damage from arrows is being decreased by 50 percent so essentially at maximum kind of damage at maximum charge he would deal 8800 damage with his just main arrow and the poison combined and now with the main arrow and the poison combined it will deal 6600 damage so about 2200 damage nerf which i think is definitely going to impact him a lot I still feel like there's big problems with Angelo that he is very fast and he can charge his attack pretty quick. I still think he's going to be a big problem. He's just not going to be able to one-shot literally every brawl in the game now. So the next brawl on the nerf list is Charlie. So she's receiving two nerfs and finally she might actually not be meta anymore. We'll have to see. Charlie's always meta though. So the first nerf is going to be with her super charge rate. It's going from six hits to seven hits. So I feel like it's not going to be make the biggest of impacts. Mainly because her super is just fundamentally broken anyways. But this also has an underlying change as well. This affects her hypercharge rate as well. So it's going to take more shots to cycle through to her hypercharge. Which again is pretty good. I think these nerfs in turn will definitely do the trick. You've also got the basic attack range being decreased from 27 tiles to 25 tiles. So this is a 7% nerf to her attack range. I think a big problem about Charlie, which I addressed before in other videos, is the fact that you could use Charlie even on bounty and long range maps and actually counter long range brawlers. And she shouldn't be used for that reason. So I'm glad they really addressed the big situation with her range. So the next brawler is Piper. She's receiving a nerf to the damage at minimum distance it's been decreased from 23 percent to 20 percent so basically at point blank she's going to deal 888 damage instead of 982 damage so it's a 13 percent nerf but theoretically is this really going to do too much of 100 damage nerf at point blank range i don't really think that's going to do too much next up on the nerf list it's nanny so this is going to have the biggest impact on the meta for me so nanny's basic attack damage is going from 1600 per orb to 1480 so this is an eight percent damage nerf which is substantial it's going from 4800 to 4440 when you hit three of your orbs so the reason why i said this is because it's so important to know those interactions especially against fellow sharpshooters because she can no longer one shot so many different brawlers in the game she can no longer two shot so many different brawlers in the game this is going to be so many interactions that change with nanny and i think this is going to have the biggest impact so the next brawler on the nerf list is cordelis he's receiving two of them the first to his basic attack damage is going from 1460 per mushroom to 1400 so this is a four percent damage nerf and then his super charge rate is going from 105 to 90 so those numbers mean that it's receiving a 16 percent nerf to his super charge rate so essentially those numbers are there because he's got a super charging radius circle and then of course his main attack that can charge his super so essentially what this change means i tested it out so before he used to take four hits and a little bit of automatic charging circle to get his super which is really fast and now that's taken five hits plus a bit of supercharge so it's going to take an extra hit essentially to charge his super i think these two are definitely going to impact him a bit but i still don't think they're substantial enough to take him out the meta so the next brawl on the nerf list is spike he's finally receiving some nerfs and i always joked about how supercell never nerf him but they finally did so the first one is with his basic attack damage it's going from 1120 to 1040 which is a four percent damage nerf which isn't really going to do a lot he also has to receive a nerf to his popping pink cushion gadget mainly because it literally correlates directly to his main attack damage that's also receiving the exact same nerf so i think it's definitely going to impact him a bit he's not going to have the same kind of damage output but i don't really foresee him being completely out of the meta he always was a little bit overrated but hopefully now randoms stop picking spike next brawl on the nerf list is bell so she's receiving a nerf to her hyper charge rate so it's going from 50 percent to 40 percent so essentially that means it's going to take her from two supers to get a hypercharge to 2.5 supers. So this is like the perfect balance change. I've got to give it props to Adrian because there's nothing really toxic in the kit overall except for the hypercharge rate. Essentially, once you've got your hypercharge, you can change a lot of interactions with a stat boost. And now it's just going to make it so you cycle for it a lot less frequently. So I think she's still going to be on the stronger side of the meta, but probably not in the s tier anymore so lastly for the nerfs we have melody and she's receiving two nerfs which were definitely needed so the first one is with her interlude shield gadget basically per note 
her shield will only be 10% instead of 15%. So overall, it can only be a 30% shield instead of a 45% shield, which is definitely a welcome nerf. It was way too strong. It made Melody way too tanky. And then the star power fast beats to movement speed per note is going from an 8% increase to 6%. So these are some really big nerfs to Melody. I think she's still going to be really strong, but I think the star power and gadget were just way too overpowered. So now moving on to some changes which five brawlers have received. So these are going to be some kind of reworks or they're going to be buffs and nerfs together. So the first one is with Crow. His daggers are now going to return to him properly after hitting walls during his hypercharge super. So this is going to allow for you to make more plays with your hypercharge. I think this actually could be a good buff to Crow because the main problem was that his hypercharge is so underwhelming and he's starting to really fall off in the meta so i think this is definitely going to help him a lot next brother that's receiving some changes is kit and he's receiving three of them so the first one with, is with his gadget cardboard box the self duration is going from five seconds to three seconds so this is a 40 percent nerf in duration this is going to make it so you can't make plays as much you can't get as much supercharge but the gadget was just way too cheesy but to compensate for that we've got two big buffs to his attack and super damage so the first is going to be with his attack damage it's going from 1600 per swipe to 2000 which is a 25 percent damage buff that is crazy for kit like that 25 percent is huge in numbers and the next is with the super damage as well that's 1600 to 2000 as well another 25 percent buff to his damage i can see this making a big impact on kit it's not going to make him crazy broken but i think it's going to make him viable finally it's probably us receiving a change is rt and he's finally getting a rework to the in the line gadget it's been well over a year the worst gadget in the game and it's getting a complete rework so it's going to be called out of line now and it instantly charges his super so you can use this definitely in a few ways you can use this to literally run up to an opponent when you're nowhere near super and you're going to be able to burst them go into jackie form and delete them instantly or you can use this gadget so if you've already got super you go into jackie form you go into split and then you go like across the map and then you're kind of stuck in a bad situation and of course you can't go back to your legs well you can just pop your gadget get your super and just teleport back so there's a lot of versatility for this there's definitely going to be competition for which gadget is better and i feel like out of the line probably will be the better gadget now hank is receiving a buff and a nerf so it's bittersweet but at least he's getting some love right so we love to see this hank's super is now going to heal 50 percent of his missing hp so basically when you like one shot you can heal up to 5,000 healing you don't even need to hit your super you just need to use it so any type of healing is definitely welcomed with hank i don't think it's going to make the biggest of impacts though because it takes a long time to get his super but i don't know any type of healing in his kit could make hank very very toxic so to kind of uh, counteract that they then nerfed his hp from 1, 000, uh, 11,600 to 10,800 so that's a seven percent hp nerf so in all honesty i think hank's going to get a bit better but i don't don't think it's going to make him like crazy strong and moving on to the final balance change which is actually going to have the biggest impact i think out of every single brawler on this list it is with chuck so this is an insane change so now chuck can throw new posts whilst his dash is available so essentially you'll tap your super to dash and you can aim to throw a new post so the big reason why chuck was just so bad in every single game mode is because it was so awkward to throw your posts essentially you had to be within this outside of a massive radius of the post or else you just dash to it or you have to be behind a wall so now you can literally just throw supers on top of each other i think he's going to be insanely viable the fact that you get this damage reduction while supering is going to be the big uh, kind of selling point for him i think chuck is going to be absolutely an s tier brawler now so now we're going to be ranking the new hypercharges coming to the game so of course this is hard to test against bots but this is just my first initial reaction so at number six the worst hypercharge coming with the new update is takes hypercharge called head strong so i don't think this is going to be useless but i think the main reason why it's going to be weak is because of how long it's going to take to get it which plays a big impact on whether the hypercharge is strong or not so straight away this hypercharge takes four supers to get which essentially is 24 tick mines which is forever to get to that hypercharge so that's a bit main reason but if you're wondering what it does essentially tick will throw out his head much quicker it will chase after enemies much quicker and then when it explodes it will leave six mines which deal 4000 damage per mine so again like the mines people aren't going to be running into those mines i think that the tick head hasn't received any type of hp buff so i think people still might be able to take it down quite quickly i think it's going to be a 
good hypercharge for tick but it's not better than the rest that are coming so next up as the fifth best new hypercharge coming with the update is june's hypercharge called hyper hands so whenever it gets this hypercharge it will throw off three sets of hooks one will go straight and the other two will go diagonal and the reason why i don't think this will be too strong either is because most of the time how are you going to have the ammo to compete and take down the brawlers it's going to be hard unless there's always someone next to you i think it could pair well with spirit slap for example but the main reason why i don't think it's going to be strong is because it's going to take three supers to get this hypercharge i think that's going to take an absolute age to get in a real game if you land your supers though and you then cycle through to your next super it's you're going to get hypercharged pretty quick but if you miss a couple like i do it's going to be really hard to get that hypercharge and i just think the hypercharge itself isn't actually going to be that strong so the fourth best hypercharge is going to be max's hypercharge called unlimited energy so whenever she pops this hypercharge super she'll throw an energy drink to her teammates wherever they are on the map and give them an increased movement speed and then also a 25 percent charge to their super so i think this is going to be pretty good for utility again i don't think it's going to be like crazy strong because with max you typically like close to your teammates so you can give them super i think the 25 percent super charge is going to be a big like influential factor to a lot of different gunfights especially with some really slow charging at supers you know like tara sandy etc i think it's going to take a long time to get this hype charge as well 35 shots to get this hype charge is insane that's 2.5 supers so it's going to take a long time unless you of course switch to the supercharged star power that might help you cycle through those hype charges a lot quicker but I don't think it's going to be crazy strong. Moving into the third best new hype charge, we have at Brock's hype charge called Rocket Barrage. So I know the initial reaction straight away was everybody was screaming about this hype charge. But I think in theory, it's actually pretty balanced, maybe even on the weaker side. Main reason being because it deals 500 damage per rocket. So essentially, Brock will fire a rocket barrage of four waves of rockets. So it's going to be a lot more like focused in a circle. So it's going to be a lot easier to get confirmed damage in my opinion but again its main super is actually going to deal more damage in total and especially if you know how to manipulate the amount of damage that you can deal so essentially i tested this out on the high safe as well and it would deal 17,500 damage with his more rocket star power and if you're wondering the more rocket star power does combine with this hyper charge as well so if you want even more hypercharged rockets and then use more rocket star power i use that star power anyway so that's going to make it pretty good maybe reason why this hypercharge is going to be pretty good as well because it only takes two supers to get his hypercharge so he's going to be able to cycle for it much quicker i think it could be underrated it looks very fun and the fact that you get more consistent damage might actually be pretty strong but i feel like people might be overacting a little bit we'll have to test it out maybe i'm completely wrong but it does look kind of crazy so moving into the second best new hypercharge coming to the game it's going to be nita's hypercharge called hyper bearings so what this hypercharge does, it gives Bruce an extra 15% movement speed and an extra 20% in HP. So that doesn't really sound like a lot, but trust me, in high stats, it's going to be crazy because you think about all the buffs that you can give Bruce, right? You can give his hypercharge, which gives him a 20% increased health. And then you can give him the pet power epic gear, which gives him increased damage. And then you can give him the shield uh, gadget, which gives him even more tankiness. And then you can just you know give him hyper bear give him bear with me and he's just gonna be crazy to take down and the fact that it only takes two supers to get this hype charge you're going to be spawning a lot of big bruises around the map which is going to be crazy so i think this hype charge is going to be very underrated it's going to waste so much ammo from the opponents it's just literally going to cripple them and send them into spawn consistently so now we're moving into the best new hype charge coming with the update and this is by far the best new hype charge probably even the best hype charge in the game to be honest it's sandy's swift wind so with this hype charge super you get an increased 20 percent movement speed so it's essentially like a mini max super within his sandstorm you also get to silence opponents for 0.5 seconds and then of course on top of that you get the additional movement speed buff with the hype charge itself and damage buff it's absolutely insane the way that you can overwhelm opponents is crazy. Sandy already has one of the best supers in the game for map control. And you just got to send him in spawn literally so fast. And I actually think that it might pair with the healing wind star power a little bit better. Of course, on grassy maps, you still want to use rude sands. But just think about it. You can silence them and then also use the sweet dreams gadget as well. That's 1.5 seconds of total just stun, which is going to be crazy again you just think of any map any scenario how quickly you can overwhelm people with this hype charge is crazy it only takes 10 shots to get this hype charge as well so that's less than two supers to get this hyper charge i can see sandy easily being an s tier brawler 
and you know for the first time in a while i think we've got a crazy strong hype charge which people are going to underestimate to be honest but i think it's by far the best new hype charge coming with the update now we're going to do a quick segment on the mutations that are coming mainly because i know i focus mainly on balanced and competitive gameplay but mutations do seem like a lot of fun but they are very imbalanced so i'm going to take a look at some of the mutations which i think are going to be by far the strongest the first one being rico so it might seem like it's very underwhelming but trust me the fact that he gets so much additional range from his bounces you're just going to infinitely shoot across the map and you're going to damage opponents so easily i think it's going to be by far one of the best mutations so another mutation that's going to be game breaking is going to be carl's mutation whenever he uses super he literally just flies across the map this is going to be crazy broken how are you going to even be able to get close to carl this, this mutation is so hilarious to me it's definitely going to be one of the best next crazy broken mutation is going to be stew's mutation so you get a super infinitely so you can just dash around the map it's going to be pretty hard to deal consistently damage consistent damage over time but the fact that you can just juke whenever you want and just fly across the map whether it's with gas heal whether it's with zero drag i think it's going to be hilarious and he's definitely going to be the wet one of the best brawlers for this mutation the next brawler i think that's going to break this modifier is definitely going to be hank so literally whenever he receives any type of damage his super will just fly off his torpedoes will fly everywhere so if you're facing off against like an 8 bit a lola a colt you're just going to instantly kill everyone on the map this is absolutely hilarious i think he's easily going to be one of the best brawlers for this modifier and i think i'm just going to play on mutations 24 7 if hank is this good so the next brawler you should definitely be aware of with mutations is nita i know it doesn't sound like her mutation is much fun but the fact that you can spawn two hypercharged bruce bears at the same time it's just gonna cause absolute chaos and devastation to the opponents 10k hp on both of the bears and then you can just keep cycling through i don't know what anyone is going to be able to do against that the brother that's definitely going to be completely broken is primo so essentially gets increased super charge rate but then his super just flies across the map so much quicker and lands so much quicker you're just not going to be able to stop it it's just hilarious how broken this mutation is so the last mutation on the list is going to be meg i feel like people would have definitely overseen this one a lot but meg's main attack will split off to a lot of different projectiles this will just absolutely shred for opponents and i can't wait to get my hands on some of these mutations so now moving on to the ranked improvements there's eight in total which was the probably the thing i cared most about with the update because ranked has a lot of potential but there were so many problems that they needed to fix so let's just run from them right now so the first one is going to be with matchmaking matchmaking will now favor teams playing against other teams so situations of solos playing against teams will be significant significantly less common i didn't actually notice too much that i played against teams but at the same time it was very annoying especially if i had two just random teammates i never heard of and then i faced off against three pro players i knew for a fact that i was losing that game and most of the time my teammates would end up dodging so hopefully there's less dodging as a result of this ranked point game from solo players will now consider the team average ranked points against the opposing team's points so i really like this change essentially it means that um it will consider all of them together instead of like the lowest ranked player i believe because you know sometimes i would look at both sets of teams and we would have the same kind of distribution but i would only gain like 25 elo and then the same exact same kind of elo distribution would happen in the next game and then i would if i lost that game i would lose like 170 elo or 200 elo so it just didn't make sense so i'm hoping that the kind of elo gain is a little bit more balanced now they've also adjusted the ranked points gained in legendary 2 up to masters so it's a bit more of a challenge to reach masters so i kind of like this change it's going to be a little bit more difficult at the early stage of ranks because of course there's not many there's not many people at the top but i think you know give it a week give it two weeks for kind of the elo to balance i think this will be a good change and hopefully not your average joe will be able to get masters with this change the next change is with rank boost so it'll now give a higher boost depending on how high you reached in your previous rank season so of course if you reach masters in the previous rank season you'll get more of a rank boost for say that someone that finished at legendary or mythic so this is a great change it just incentivizes you even more to push with every single rank season a great change but i don't think the really need to up the rank boost too much i know a lot of people did complain that they didn't really feel the boost but at the same time i don't think we need any more help to get masters in this current point in time 
Players in the bronze to gold ranks will now have a higher chance of getting modifiers in their matches, which is great. I think at the lower ranks, people should be incentivized to have more fun with the modifiers. And of course, that was a big problem with casuals that they just couldn't get into ranks. So this will kind of help soften the blow and make things more fun for the casuals. So hopefully they can just enjoy the ranked experience more. On the other side, they've reduced the probability of getting modifiers for players in Masters. So this is a great change. This is what people want to see a lot more because let's face it modifiers just they aren't competitive it don't matter what like modifier i've played with none of them have been competitive in the slightest i think the recent batch have been less toxic and less influential on the meta so they've been a bit more uh, i would say competitive but they're still not competitive in the slightest and then there's two, been two bug fixes as well the first one being to the masters leaderboard glitch they've now correctly sorted that so now you, it's actually based on their rank points instead of trophies after a certain amount and then they've also fixed the issue that under level brawlers can be picked in rank games now they can't be picked so essentially if you swapped with uh, your teammate and they had a level one kit you, you could actually swap with him and then he could play with his level one kit i think they've changed that so then you can't swap anymore so a lot of changes to ranked i'm optimistic that hopefully these are the changes that will push ranked in an even better direction now now we're going to be going through all the map pool changes because that's one thing in particular that most people don't show but i really do like seeing what maps are coming and going so to do with gem grab first flooded mine double swoosh and mine got matters have been removed from the rotation and then we have a death cap trap which has been added back in which is an og map we have a gem four as well which is actually returning to the ranked rotation as well which is a pretty good map and then we have a last stop return Returning as well which is returning to ranked rotation as well but i'll show that fully at the end once i got through all of these in terms of 5v5 gem grab that's not been changed too much in terms of showdown not everyone's interested but if you are scorch stone island evasion safety center and marksman Par paradise have been removed the ones that have been added are cavern churn right here again an iconic map everyone knows this one dark passage which is returning we have 55 which is a brand new showdown map which looks pretty interesting especially with the spawn points and then we have rock war brawl which is returning so a lot of changes to showdown and then we have trophy escape which i'm not too sure is going to be a game mode even anymore if it's even in the next update and then we have heist so two maps which are being removed we have pit stop and bridge to far being removed and then we have hot potato which is returning which you guys should know and kaboom canyon as well so a little bit controversial but gg mortary is returning which is kind of insane in terms of the rank map pool hot potato and kaboom canyon are going to be the ones returning to ranked map pool in terms of bounty then two maps that have been removed are layer cake and excel two maps that have been added canal grande and then a brand new bounty map which is called color me intrigued i think it's called i don't know how to feel about this map it looks okay a lot of water though a little bit concerned about that and then we're moving on to brubble so there's been four maps that have been removed it's pinball dreams galaxy arena encirclement and off the line maps that have been re-added sneaky fields we have backyard bowl we have sunny soccer and then we have um, Super Beach as well. And then we've also got a change to Goalkeeper's Dream where they've added these posts just before the goal, which I don't know how to really feel. I'll have to test it out, but I feel like they should have just added goal posts. I don't know why they haven't added goal posts. I think this might actually make it worse. We'll have to see. No changes to the 5v5. And then we have Hot Zone. So Split and Open Zone have been removed. And then Open Business has been added and Parallel Plays as well. They've also been added, I believe, to the... Um, ranked rotation as well as dual and beetles in terms of the new game mode we've got godzilla city smash we've got four maps right here which i'm not really too interested in but you can see i think it'll be good fun for a little while next we have knockout we have two maps that have been removed which is healthy middle ground and also flowing springs we've had two maps which i think have been in the rotation before with four levels i'm not too it might actually be a new map and between the rivers i think they're actually new maps i actually don't remember really playing them we've got three new 5v5 knockout out maps as well here they are on the screen pretty interesting i'm excited to try the new knockout it seems really fun and exciting in terms of jewels then i'm not too sure i've not really played too much jewels myself but here are the maps just in case you've not seen them before i feel like we've played pretty much all of them ones before maybe not burning flames you guys will definitely know and then finally we have wipeout so in terms of maps removed we have shooting star and snake prairie have been removed quad damage has been added back and the great open as well so that's going to be it 
for today's video i hope you guys enjoyed it also take a look at the ranks rotation on the screen right here a lot of changes i'm excited it's going to feel really fresh let me know what you think of the update in the comment section below don't forget to like comment and subscribe and i'll see you guys next time